my name is Christopher Woodward with Modern West. I'm the artist in residency liaison here. Um, and today I'll be introducing our newest artist, Jaron Wagstaff. Our artist in residency program is a three month uh, quarterly program where we invite artists and creatives to utilize our space, create an exhibition, and, and showcase their exhibition here at the gallery. Um, Jaron Wagstaff is in his first month of his residency and he is doing some exciting things. So. Without further ado, this is Jaren. Hello. <laughs> um, Jaren, tell us a little bit about your background. Uh, so I'm originally from uh, Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, I grew up in the Holiday area and went to Lewis High School. Um, I did my undergraduate work at Brigham Young University and then I did my master's degree at California State University, Long Beach. Um, so I lived in the Los Angeles area for about 12 years and uh, came back to Utah maybe I guess six years now uh, ago, and um, just been making art and teaching and um, working on this new body of work. Yeah, what brought you back to Utah? Uh, just family. We've been away for uh, you know quite a while, and um, you know we wanted to be a little bit closer to our family, so yeah, uh, we moved back. Yeah. That's great. Really understandable. <laughs> um, so it, for your work, for your exhibition, tell us a little bit about the consistent themes and concepts that you're working through. Um, so with my last exhibition, um, I was kind of transitioning from abstraction uh, back to representational styles of painting, and so I gave myself a little bit of a blank check to explore whatever subject matter I wanted. Um, so when COVID uh, kind of came around, uh, what I wanted to do was to kind of drill down and see, you know, what all the subject matters I was interested in um, had in common. So. Uh, kind of what I found was that um, the most prevalent three things that I could kind of uh, put a name to were uh, spectacle, absurdity, and desire. And so, um, you know, that's kind of the basis for most of what my painting is about. And with this current body of work, I've uh, you know, kind of been interested in what's uh, going on, obviously, in America. It's been kind of a wild few years to be an American. So, uh, what I'm interested in is exploring how the mythology of the American landscape shapes how we view being an American today. That's great. That's super interesting. Um, I know that in your work, 19th century romantic um, paintings are huge. Uh, they're very relevant in your work. Would you want to speak a little bit to that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think with um, you know with current events how they are. Um, it's almost impossible to respond in real time to all the things that are going on uh, right now. So uh, what I wanted to do is to maybe go back more towards the foundation of America and kind of see where um, some of these myths about being American or what the ideology of being an American comes from. And so I feel like a lot of um, the, the, the ethos and the psychology of American um, you know, rugged individualism or American exceptionalism comes kind of out of that tradition of 19th century landscape painting. Um, kind of in particular the way that the youth artists would make composites or conglomerations, you know, from different parts of the landscape and basically make a kind of a hyper or super landscape that was meant to be kind of perfect in every way. Yeah, yeah. We've talked a little bit about that, um, that over-exaggeration and that grandness of those paintings mm -hmm. and how they speak to your mythology and the, the folklore in your art. Right, right. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? What about um, who's influencing you right now? Um, right now I'm working a lot with uh, Albert Bierstead. Um, he's a kind of, I don't want to say infamous, but <laughs> <laughs> notoriously um, you know, known painter for his exaggerations of the American landscape. So I'm kind of doing a deep dive into his work um, and really kind of, um, you know, since he was making composites of the landscapes, so I'm kind of making composites of his composites to create my own landscapes and kind of my own mythology of the American landscape. Um, so he's probably, you know, probably one of the biggest influences on my work right now. Yeah. When you talk about com um, composites of composites, um, let's, could we give the audience just a little bit of context to your process? Sure, yeah. Um, you know, I think with uh, the way that Albert Bierstead would come about these paintings would be, he 
might spend you know, six weeks in Yosemite Valley, for example, mm -hmm. making studies, making small paintings. And then he would bring all that material back east to the studio in New York and then spend 10 months constructing a painting that was based on all of these sketches from different angles, different views, different times of day. And sometimes even different parts of the landscape that didn't line up. Um, I know that there are some of the paintings that I've been studying, they can't even place them because they don't even exist. You know, they don't know where they are and they don't, you know, they're not real. So uh, what I like to do with uh, the Beerstead paintings is to, you know, take them into Photoshop, break them apart, duplicate images, change spatial relationships, scale relationships, color relationships, and then you know, kind of put them all back together to make my own sort of composite or Frankenstein landscape. So in something like this, you might see a mountain range that's in the background coming, kind of coming forward, or a landscape that's in the foreground going back into deep space, um, maybe different times of day, different color schemes. And again, the idea is to kind of put them together in the same place to see if they can exist, but also uh, to kind of maybe speak to the absurdity of trying to piece together a, a perfect landscape. Yeah, no, it's super fascinating, super interesting. It's good to have the context. It's a really interesting, unique process. It's the, the deconstruction of an older process using contemporary practice is really fascinating. Um, I know it's a little early to be talking about this since you just started your residency, but what do you have planned after your residency here? Um, I'm going to be <laughs> really focusing my entire you know, uh, attention on residency for the next few months, and this is a relatively new body of work that I'm uh, you know, kind of delving into, so um, you know, I'm, I'm going to be focused here, but I do have an exhibition planned uh, for April 2020 at Knox Contemporary Gallery, where great. I will probably continue to <laughs> explore this theme, because I've got a lot of um, ideas are coming out of the, the residency for sure. That's great, that's super exciting. I had no idea that you were going to have another exhibition. Yeah, it's going to be a quick turnaround, but I'm really excited about the paintings <laughs> and about their work. always that way, though. Yeah, right? yeah, they're all going to pile up. Um, well, Jaren will be having a workshop here at Modern West October 23rd. So that's next sat next month's third sat fourth Saturday, one of the two. And then um, he'll be having his artist exhibition reception here in November, November 19th, I believe. So come and join us, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you.